Daniel Andrews says he's backing down, not the words we've often heard used by him in the pandemic. Now, if reports are true, his government won't get their state of emergency provisions for a full year through. Instead, they'll be forced to compromise, some say, at around the six-month point. But even this amount of time could put civil liberties at risk, according to some of Australia's most senior legal minds. Chris Merritt, formerly the Australian legal editor there, is the vice president of the Rule of Law Institute of Australia. He joins me now from Sydney. Thanks very much for your time, Chris. This is a huge issue. You don't know all the, the rights that you have or the liberties you have until they start being sort of ripped away. The Health Minister is supposedly talking to the crossbench about this six-month extension. Now, they'll need four out of the 12 crossbenches in the upper house to get it passed. The Liberals won't support it. What do you make of the Premier's push? That's hardly a compromise. Uh, six months is massively too long. <clears throat> the legislation uh, at the moment puts an upper, puts a limit of six months. It, that's the legislation that was designed for, if I can say, orthodox emergencies, bushfires, floods. We're in the middle of an emergency that might go on for the medium term and simply sacrificing rights and liberties at, at the discretion of a public servant, and that's what this is, the Chief Health Officer, um, unless the legislation is radically overhauled, has the power to extend the emergency health, health orders for a, up to six months if he feels like it. So when, when we're talking about a six-month compromise, we could be talking about six months and another six months and another six months. It's way too long. This is a scheme that was designed for quick use, maybe yeah. a month or two. This could be with us for months, for years, medium-term stuff. So it, it, we need to get back to a system that takes account of responsible government where the executive branch is held accountable for its actions to the parliament. Now, if it's too... Well, this, leads too... Me to, this leads me to the other point there, if I can jump in. I mean, the three parts of our you know, constitutional framework, the judiciary, the parliament and the executive, which is obviously where the Premier sits. One of the real concerns I've had is the lack of parliamentary sittings. Now, we've got a curfew in Victoria. We didn't have a curfew in any of the wars. Uh, we've got a parliament that's barely sitting. Now, even when they were bombing London, Churchill still had the parliament sit. We didn't have the parliament, uh, you know, not sit during world wars here in Australia either. This has to be my greatest criticism, the lack of parliamentary accountability and oversight. It's June since the lower house last sat, June. We've had not even the full cabinet in Victoria keeping an eye on things. It's been a, a subcommittee, eight ministers. That's, that's, that's not enough. We're talking about mm -hmm. orders uh, that take away people's rights to leave their homes, that, that empower uh, state officials to enter homes without a search warrant, order people to do things and not do other things, to, to, that limits their ability to move freely within the state of Victoria, and overseen by a, a committee of eight ministers. That's not good enough. And to even contemplate extending this system for another six months, let alone a year, is completely ridiculous. No more than a month. Not Make it no more than a month. And then have not the Chief Health Officer de determining whether these things go ahead, but the Parliament, or at, at the very least, a, a committee made up of all uh, representative parties in the Parliament, so that it, people will have confidence in that. At the moment, it's subject to criticism because of the lack of respect for democratic norms. We're moving into uncharted territory. We mm -hmm. need to bring with us norms such as responsible government so that people in Victoria will, they might still be locked up in their homes, but at least they'll know that it's got, a, that's got democratic le and legitimacy. Checks and balances, I'm with you. It should be a month at a time and every time there's an, exemption, an extension sought, it should be before the parliament to decide and nowhere for premiers to hide. Chris Merritt, mm. thank you for your time. Quite okay.